G'day, it's a saint here at King's Cross in Springfield Plaza at the Sugar Mill having a coffee with a special guest who have never seen before, Pentagon 25. Hello, it's me again enjoying my wonderful green tea. Green tea. How's the green tea at uh, the Absolutely Sugar Mill? Absolutely succulent, satisfying and ravishing. I feel like such a yuppie sipping my wonderful green tea. Anyway, how are you all? Yes, how are you all out there? YouTube land freezing in Sydney. Today hasn't been too bad. It, yesterday, I think somebody told me it was the coldest night in at least a couple of decades. And people in Europe don't believe me when I tell them in Sydney it gets cold. It's bloody freezing. Sydney, and we're in one of the best sugar mills. And it's a pretty legendary cafe and Bahar. And it's really nice, very friendly, great coffees, great teas, great green teas. You can't go wrong. Steak here is only $10. Oh, this wow. sounds like a commercial, doesn't it? <laughs> that is really good value. Um, yeah. High hotels and stuff. Over there, there yes. Yeah. The old carousel, where um, the last place that went eaten in Nelson was seen alive. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> and the home of Lay Girls, the legendary home Lay of Girls. Lay Girls, yeah. Wonderful yeah. place. In a wonderful area of Sydney, King's Cross. You've got to check out the bright lights. What did you think of Underbelly, the Golden Mile, which was set on this location around here? To be honest, I saw a lot of the first two series of Underbelly. I wasn't a fan. I found it quite dull. And this one, I think they were trying to make one of those Kill Bill type movies. And I'm sorry, Australia does some great drama and some great television. But when it comes to things like Underbelly, they don't have the edge. I only watched it because it was set in King's Cross, an area I know well, but it didn't have it. It felt like being spanked with a wet lettuce. I think you're being a bit harsh on Australia there. I beg to do for David, Feel free. David Stratton over here. Um, I just saw last night a film called Animal Kingdom. Have you seen that? It's a cinema. What's that about? And it's made and set in Melbourne and about a, uh, a criminal family in Melbourne. It is absolutely brilliant. If you've lost faith because of Underbelly and it's like, oh God, can we do anything right in Australia? Well, this film shows that, yes, we can. I think that's an interesting film about it. I think Australia does great cinema, but I don't think it does. And I'm going to be crucified for this. But in the main, I don't think it does great television, and I don't think it does great dramas anymore. Has it got any idea of character development? or unique concepts. You notice there are no vampire series here, no sci-fi, nothing, nothing, no escapism. Yes, they want to escape into a dream. Yeah, you're creating dreams and they're so anal and obsessed in making it um, true to life, that's not what people want. People in the UK watch Home and Away, not because it's familiar, it's because they like Home and Away, because it's not familiar, it is nothing like they have in Britain, which is why it's more popular there than it is here in Australia. If I want reality, I'll watch the ABC News, you know? What are most of the dramas here? They're constantly medical dramas, police dramas. It gets a bit dull, we've had All Saints, great drama, but now we've got other shows that are so similar. Where is the originality? That's what I ask you. In their continuity, a lot of time trying to make it as accurate as possible, but what they should be doing is making the characters as interesting as possible, and even the background are underutilised in an American television. The background will sometimes do something a little bit unusual, just to sort of have the X factor. They're not convinced that a vampire series of surfing vampires um, would work in Australia. And like, but they've never tried it here before. You know, like, like when have they ever tried to do something, um, sci-fi or anything in Australia, or anything interesting that the audience is starving for? When have they tried to do that here, which would actually be rating? I think they should really try. And the other issue I've got in Australia is they really do take commercial television literally. I mean, sometimes I think there are more commercials than actual TV programs. Every five minutes there's a commercial break. I guess Australians are used to it, but I just find it so distracting, really distracting. The price of the commercial, the standard price, is lower, so they have a higher velocity. But if you believe in your product, you just raise your price because you've got a quality product. So it's quality rather than quantity. 
and let the commercial um, let the companies pay more in convincing them that the product is a higher quality and then you don't need it. But it doesn't say much about the advertising people who cannot convince them that it's a higher quality. So they have to have a high quantity of commercials to pay the bill. In other words, it's them saying that, well, it really is crap, but we'll give it to you in a discount. It's, it's not a very... It doesn't really give you much confidence. I mean, in general, on British television, I don't want to, you know, trumpet the Brits here as such, but you have one break in a half an hour TV show. To me, that sounds about right. You know, SBS used to be like that, but I notice it's creeping in now. They'll sometimes have two or three breaks. Yeah, and it really distracts from the quality of the show. And I just find it very irritating. I can't concentrate because my line of concentration is harmed and destroyed by that bleeding commercial break. It's not on. It's not right. And some of them are advertising other programs on the same channel. Whereas if you've got LCD, you've got a programmer built in to your television anyway. You don't really need that. And it does break your concentration. You're there to watch content. You're not there to watch the commercials. Most people, you, 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 your mind goes blank. You go and make a cup of tea. And, and they, they try and up the noise and do the flashing. Or you, you turn, you sound the sound. I mean, if you, if you have a sense of, you turn it down the sound or you just look the other way. It's ridiculous. And I was watching television two days ago and there was a commercial break about three or four in the same program. But each commercial break was about 30 seconds. What can you do in 30 seconds? Well, not much, really. Nothing like make some tea or coffee. Nothing like really use a toilet. So you've got this 30 second break, which not only distracts from the program, but gets you a little bit irritated. So I don't really see the purpose. It's such a waste, and it's a waste of the viewer's time. And we don't have a quota system like in the UK. But we do, I think we, it has to be 20%. In the UK it's 60% local. And when they mean local, they mean the UK, not the rest of Europe. Here, yes, we have a free trade agreement with the US. This is cultural stuff, and I can't see any reason why, um, especially on the ABC, if, if they're worried about free trade, ABC's government, I mean, why can't they put the quota up to 60% but exclude sport and real life television and documentary? Because there's crap documentary as well, like, you know, cops and, and you know, um, what's happening on the, on the borders and all that border security crap. We they love it. All, it all plays into the fears that we get from the government and the media about immigration, etc. We get these shows like Border Security, and it actually plays on that. And perhaps, to a lesser extent, some people's prejudices. But I do have a confession. I actually quite enjoy Border Security, but I think that probably says more about me than it does about the show. They're doing it on the cheap. They don't have to pay actors. That's why they're doing it. It's cheap television. And so they're using police footage, which is cheap, rather than have the imagination and the nows to actually create some escapism, which we'd much prefer to watch Absolutely. some good quality drama, if we actually had it, than to watch you know, a security camera and, and a voiceover, you know? I mean, essentially, you're watching CCTV. I mean, you might as well be watching it. All these cheap, you know, they save money, all these cheap Final Wars documentaries. I mean, we should really be having dramas and, you know, quality sitcoms and things like that. Raising, raising the standards. Raise the standard, raise the benchmark. That's what you need. Come on, Australia. Where the bloody hell are you? <laughs> God bless you to say. See you later.